Vulture, the world's fastest growing pilot junk. Everyone can agree that it's it's at least okay, right? It's, I think it's really okay. It's better than okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it's fucking incredible. Okay. Yeah. That's I, that's what I really think. Yeah. I yeah. Think it's well, how far are you right now? I'm not that far. Uh, I just uh, I just defeated my first and second big daddy. In When I think back on it, it felt like a, it, it was kind of like a battle of attrition, mostly shooting it with bullets and stuff. And I figured it would probably be like that in the beginning of the game until you have more powers and you can start, you know, mixing and matching. But I realized that it was sort of environmental how I killed it because I, you know, hit it with flames, hit it with bullets, and then got it to go stand in a puddle of water and used a, a, a electric Shot. shotgun blast to to kill it. I said earlier, it feels like Metroid uh, meets Half-Life 2 to me for some reason. Yeah, I, was, I keep telling whenever someone asks me about it, like how I feel about the game. I haven't felt about a game like this since Super Metroid. Well, one of the things is that the game does have a little bit of backtracking in it, which is why I would say that it's kind of like Metroid, but it's like, it feels to me like the good kind of backtracking, mm -hmm. where it's like, you get a key and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that I gotta go back to that one spot where that, there was that locked door, you know what I mean? And it's mostly backtracking between, like, the area that you're in. I, I don't know the metric comparison, because you're still early. I, yeah, I right, can right. see why you said it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But I think if you, as, as a whole, I don't know if Metroid's the right comparison to make, except for maybe the moody atmosphere. Now you had the pleasure of Andrew Ryan's company. He's the one who built this place, and he's the one who ran it into the ground. Nobody knows exactly what happened. Maybe he went mad. Maybe the power got to him. Maybe he just decided he didn't like people. When you watch a great movie, I kind of wish I could erase my memory of it yeah. so I could experience <laughs> it for the first time. And Bioshock is kind of like, man, I wish I didn't play it because I want to play it again for the first time and experience mm -hmm. it for the first time. It's and one of those games. It's one of those things. We've played plenty of great games in the past, but they're all fun to play, where this one is like an experience, mm -hmm. like on top of everything, on top of being fun. And you kind of can play it again, like, not entirely new, but to do like the different like moral choices and the different ways of playing like playing it with different weapons and magic. Totally. We tricked you, monster. You made me. You made me. Coward. Ah, Delta. It's a pretty long game. Yeah. It's not like a eight-hour adventure. Like, it, it took me about 22 hours. I was about the same. Yeah, and I, I was, like, pretty thorough. I was, like, I, I had to check out, every, search every corpse, every mm -hmm. ashtray, every trash can. And the worst is you go into a room where there's, like, 18 crates, yeah. and then, like, you're, you're like, <laughs> I, I gotta, I can't walk away without checking every one, and mo it's, like, 90%, they're 90% yeah. empty. It's, it's, it's a tribute to, like, how compelling everything about the game is. Yeah. Like, you need to, you need to search everything out, you need to listen to all the recordings, you need to do everything, you need to experience everything about it. You keep an eye peeled for Steinman. The daft bastard set up shop in the surgery wing. You wanna find them? Just follow the blood. Adam presents new problems for the professional. As your tools improve, so do your standards. There was a time I was happy enough to take off a ward or two, or turn a real circus freak into something you can show in the daylight, but that was then. When we took what we got, but with Adam, the flesh becomes clay. But what you mentioned about those radio diaries, they're, they're so 
unimportant, but mm -hmm. they're so like they supplemental. Yeah, they add to the story, and right. you just get kind of like that much more involved in the world and what's happening. You can see where it's all building up to, and how society kind of had this downfall and I'm just like amazed from like even we're talking about the aesthetics like every little um, look and sound of everything in the game like even the hacking devices the security bots the menus it's all it feels like someone made this game back in this era mm -hmm. like it like this is like a real world like they thought it all through every step of the way and it, it there's nothing that ever took me out of the experience at all <laughs> really surprised at how uh, how quickly and how con consistently you get new powers and mm -hmm. new power-ups like almost right after the demo you know the demo stage ends you start like continually getting new plasmids and you know I think when they were showing off this game everyone kind of figured that there would just be one range of powers plasmids mm -hmm. and that would be all you would get but it's not you know you get different different types of upgrades for you know upgrades that make you uh, enable you to hold more health or more Eve or upgrades that make you better at wielding your wrench or and you're, you're always going to have more plasmids than you can equip right you're always going to have like six slots per per category so right, right, right. that's how the customization comes in that's how it, like you, you personalize the experience here. the demo area in particular um, you know even Jeremy had written about how he felt like mm -hmm. it was kind of a, a linear path Ken Levine has promised that the game opens up at the end so does it I mean does it feel like you are actually exploring more, or does it is it leading you down one path? I would say narratively, the game is very linear, mm -hmm. but like the hall that you're you're going down is really wide. Right. So as you're going down this hall, you can go zigzag kind of back and forth between the areas, between the powers. You can go back and forth, and the That's enemies easy. respawn all the time, but it makes sense where they respawn and how they respawn. So there's always you're always engaged. In it. Yes, the artist knows there is richer earth to till. And where the game seems less linear is like anytime you enter like an apartment complex or some kind mm. of building where a lot of different people live in. There's always this giant arrow, mm -hmm. and it's a really good arrow because it's you know, like there are times where I'm like, where am I supposed to go next? And I'm trying to ignore the arrow. You know, I, I actually turned turn it off, so yeah, you can't turn it yeah, off. Yeah, you can go into the menu and turn it off, and so I just figured I would like it better that way. So I haven't been playing with the arrow turned off. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the arrow is kind of like, it, it doesn't just point at the objective; it tells you where to turn. It's like a GPS oh, okay. system, so it's actually kind of helpful. And the game kind of holds your hand, but not to the point where it annoyed me. It's a, it's mm. always like. You know what? Like we're gonna give you enough help that you you're you're never lost and you're never wondering what to do next. Mm -hmm. There's the objective that the arrow will tell you to go to, or you can just break up and say, "I'm gonna explore this room," or right. or like this hotel room, and I'm gonna go check this out and break into this room and search around. Whoa, you, come to my town? To my town? you know, I played through the demo something like four times before I finally got the game. Uh, and uh, one of the times, one, the other evening, uh, one of my friends was over. Now she's a fan of uh, survival horror games, Silent Hill, all that stuff. But uh, she's not very good at playing first-person shooters. But I thought this game is so awesome. I really think you're gonna you're gonna like it. Why don't you give the get demo try? Put it on easy and let's see how it goes. How do you like that, sister? Would you kindly find a crowbar or something? And the adaptive hint system is really, really, really well put together, especially when you consider the, the how the, the death works with the Vita Chamber respawning. And so, you know, you, you pretty much never feel too punished for, for dying. 
So did she like it then? She did. She was really into it. She ended up like getting all the way through. I mean, I could tell right away that she, you know, doesn't do dual analog control that much. You know, right. the hints kept getting getting progressively better as time went by, and I was like, wow, that's really clever. With the, that, you know, GPS-like arrow and these hints, anyone's going to be able to play it. Unless you're easily frightened. Because <laughs> yeah. it is a scary game. And that's the one thing like I kind of I talked about in my review that I don't know if the game gets enough credit for being scary. Like, because people talk about this, it, it, the graphics look great and it's this uh, immersive world, but it's like, it's, it's really a creepy game. Why? Stop! There's always something kind of weird or some a corpse set up in this way that it just makes you wonder what happened in this room before. The sound design is what mm -hmm. I think really deserves the credit for making the game so scary. And that's, you know, maybe not so strangely, the last game that really scared me as much as this game uh, was System Shock 2, another game by, by Ken Levine. Mm -hmm. And because they have the same people coming back to work on the sound design in this game, I mean, it's just, it's incredible. Voices weird ambient sound effects and, and even the music, they're all really just like really well done. So there's this um, theater district these splicers like jump in at you and they just there's a ton of them that are coming at you and all of a sudden it kicks in like Waltz of the Flowers, Tchaikovsky from the, like, from the Nutcracker. Nice. And you're oh my god, this is like ballet music. Instinctually I, I switch to my shotgun and like it's on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm dancing around the level to the, the classical music. <laughs> this is an action scene and I'm making it as I go along. What's so surprising to me is how, how polished it is uh, and how good it looks and sounds and plays and everything. I mean, it's just such a polished experience and it comes out of this, uh, what I would consider kind of a, a tiny development house. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just I can't wait to see what they do next now. I mean, Bioshock 2, maybe maybe a, like a same style game, completely different uh, mm -hmm. world, that would be awesome. Give me a pick. In uh, a couple weeks, we're going to to Leipzig. We're going to Germ I'm going to so Germany. Like a week and a half. Yeah. Are you going to be there? No, because uh, I basically have to stay here to promote the movie, yeah. and I will be only ten days in Germany to promote Postal and in England, and the rest I will focus on North America. Postal's coming out here in October. You said it's coming out in like a limited release. Why is it a limited release when it's coming out here? How big it is, uh, is basically not in my hands. The exhibitors, uh, they book it or they don't book it. And there's a lot of uh, facts, like basically, they can, they can play into it. Like if the competition is too big, if all the theaters are booked, whatever. But we hope we're getting like seven, 800 screens. So you talked about like you wanted to make like a, a political statement with Postal. Like what, what kind of political statement do you think you're making with Postal exactly? Oh, there are different ones, right? So, first, I think Postal is a statement against uh, censorship. It's a statement about that you start seeing it and a lot of people are offended. And uh, we did a test with Postal in Orange County with a normal audience. And we had the highest exit quote ever in a test screening. 
So where like 40% of the people went out and they said like, I'm really offended, I really, I cannot believe it. Right, know? right, right. So, but we had also 30% of the people, they say, this was the best comedy I saw in the last five <laughs> years. So you have like a totally split audience with Postal. You have the people that really say, this is what I, what I was, was waiting for the whole time. And you have the people they say, I'm totally offended. And I want, the message is also, you should ask yourself, like why I'm offended now? Why, why we can hack people in pieces in movies like Saw or Hostel, but if I show a day fully naked, I'm offended. Or I, I shoot a child, I'm offended. But I shoot 50 adults, I'm not offended. So there is a lot of stuff what is, a, what is kind of a, a statement. And the other thing is a political statement. I think, I think it shows how fucked up the politic right now is. It's so like if your movie comes out and your studio says you have to take out that 9/11 scene. They what, say. What, what, well, you said you said that they wanted they want to take that out. So like, what, right. do, what do you what do you do in response to that? No, but there are scenes uh, you can compromise and scenes you cannot compromise. And the opening of the movie you cannot compromise. You cannot cut it out. It stays. And and then uh, then you have to go for the higher rating. You have to go for the less screens because you cannot cut the movie uh, totally in a way that it makes no sense anymore. And and that that. Uh, the edge is out. The thing, the whole point is, uh, I think for a movie like Postal, it is good if you have people walking out and, and they are offended because this was the reason also to do it. And if everybody would be happy and you have like 85% of the people sitting there and they say, oh yeah, Postal was entertaining, but you cut it all the edgy stuff out, you would lose the basic point why I made the movie. Why, why use 9-11? Of all things to use wine, why use 9-11? No, because, because look, first of all, I think 9-11 is now a long time ago. And the second thing is, is that 9-11 was the most hor horrible, hardest terror attack ever, right? But what America, the Bush government made out of 9-11 is shabby. And this is the thing why I make fun out of it now, because I think it is in a way, uh, uh, it turned into something what is an insult for also the victims. It's not like I, I don't insult the victims. I, I think they were used from the Bush government to basically justify a completely senseless invasion in Iraq. What has nothing to do with Al Qaeda, nothing to do with the terror attack. And so is that is that kind of the view from there? Like is that like commonly in Germany, like is that how people like view American? Like you're kind of like kind of bringing that yeah, view forward? Yeah, because the thing was where, where Germany was approached to join the forces to go to Iraq. Uh, I think our government sucked also, but they made one thing right. They really uh, checked it out and they said, Saddam Hussein is a dictator, but he had nothing to do with that attacks. And we don't do that war. We don't go in that war. And I think this was very good. And another thing what is what I should mention is uh, the ex-Kanzler Schröder, he wrote his biography now. And he wrote, right. he was alone with Bush in a room. Uh, totally alone, no translator, nothing. And Bush told him, God told me to start the Iraq war. And like that serious. So, so why, why, vi why like video games? Out of his mind. Why video games? Why why post? I mean, we yeah, you hear about these things. You hear the like documentaries, stuff like that. Like, why is postal the thing that brings you forward to say this kind of statement? No, I think postal was the perfect game because it's it's I think banned in 30 territories. It didn't find even good distribution in America. They all self-distribute. And and this is for example the first thing. What now the distributor comes cut the September 11 shots out, then Walmart will take the DVD. Don't lose that opportunity. Postal the game is so politically incorrect and uh, that it was the best foundation for a movie like this. So, so like, talk, talk, talk about Far Cry, like what, you just finished principal photography and Far Cry. Yeah, yeah. Postal is very different from the game. You kind of yeah. took what it believed in and ran with it. Right. So how does, is Far Cry more like the game or like how, how should, what should we expect from that yeah far cry is uh, uh, basically uh, i think the movie closest to the game i ever did like so i think so why, why so why so because jack carver and and uh, he rents his boat out to the journalist she goes to the island she tries to find out what's going on with dr krieger his boat gets destroyed he's really pissed about it this is a, a story what you have in that game what you could do one to one you could use it 
and a lot of games don't have that. House of the Dead has no story. So no. Uh, what, what are the, what are there? Are you working like you still want to work with games or like I know you have Seed coming out soon. Right. Um, are, are you just working with games or is there what else are you working on right now? Uh, I did Tunnel Rat. What is a Vietnam War movie? Very hard movie. Maybe my hardest movie I did. And Seed, it's a horror movie. And we actually develop on our own a video game Tunnel Rat. Uh, and Seed is a horror movie, it's like the bitter, depressed brother of Postal, where it's also like kind of an apocalyptic ending. And uh, so, but now I don't shoot anymore. The next eight, nine months, I will promote my movies and finish Take, my taking movies. A break, taking yeah, a break, and I don't shoot doing another movie till summer next year. Trying to get Postal into those theaters as much Absolutely. as you can. Absolutely. Don't miss Postal, this is the most important movie from all my movies. Bet the cat. Do the math. This had a billion bits. Like what the hell is that? Like, oh my god. <laughs> Why is the logo over there? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <This> is... Yikes. <laughs> Holy to be, shit, look at these to be added I think you should pick Freaky. Uh, stress? I want to be Mason Stress. <laughs> Gruff and Scrappy. Scrappy Miss Bones. Scrape Bones. Scrape. Scrape. <laughs> Twitch. Rabies. I'm not gonna be the white people that can't jump. Be burger and stop, dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Populous. <laughs> this is good so far. Oh, we're Whoa. in the park. Oh, scaling. Whoa. Wow. This is incredible. And checkers. They pressed every button on the effects oh. board. Oh, the music's pretty sweet, man. Hear that bass? Bang. What? <laughs> huh? Act. What's happening? I like the rainbow font. We're in a beautiful, like, country club setting. Is this reminding anybody of the hit feature film, White Men Can't Jump? Yeah, yeah, How's Oh, it? yeah. I'm that Puerto Rican chick. I want a spoo, Billy! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's her on the sideline. This game uses up to 50 fonts. <laughs> I said that right on the box, too. <laughs> Nearly 50 fonts. <laughs> take it back. <laughs> I don't want to take it back. I'm just going to fucking Where shoot it. it. Shoot it right there. Bang. Bang. Oh, man. It's off. It's off. You know, it's a really good idea. Some of these fonts. It was a great idea. <laughs> oh, to have a huge oh, word. Holy fuck, that guy done the three points. Straight line. to the cup. And he was white. <laughs> he was white. That was chump. Bang up time on the flip top. Oh, man. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. I'm not from the streets. Oh, Schooled man. um. <laughs> that seems to indicate points. Oh, oh I sweet. will say, this, does, this doesn't look that bad for a Jaguar game. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the most backhanded uh, compliment. Yo, I've seen far bad. worse. That was a line from oh, the movie, I think. Was it? What's that? That had to hurt. Hard work being. That's there. gonna leave a mark. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. Bitch. I'm getting too old for this shit. Use the force. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's right. You give me that dollar again and again. <laughs> those are hundreds. Those are hundreds, dude. Oh man, those are. Uh, you call those Benjamins on the street? <laughs> That was a microtransaction oh, just now. Oh. On the Xbox Live Arcade version, you actually have to spend real money when that happens. Yeah. Right? I tried, Shane. Do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a real triumph of effects. Look at these logos oh. and things spin around. I don't want to hold this. <laughs> it's too late. Hey, I designed the game. We couldn't hold four to model, Wait, see? Is that, is that David Faustino on the left? <laughs> of Married to Children? Uh, I'm not un uncredited cameo. I'm not pushing a button to get this off the TV. <laughs> oh damn it! I was gonna watch that for like an hour. Wait, we should make a different level. This one's pretty good. That's clearly the streets. Oh, oh the mean suburbs. <laughs> you guys wanna Which one am I? fucking play some basketball and go to Best Buy? Where am I? What am I? I'm gonna be the soccer mom here. 
Look at their orange slacks. Or <laughs> Soccer moms can jump. That was the sequel to this movie. It didn't do quite as well. If she wins, she goes and buys a nice pair of slacks. Billy, I want to screw! <laughs> I love your slacks, Billy! Oh, man. What's the, which button's the turbo button? This is how I play. Yeah. First I take it back. First you punch, oh, you man. punch. And then I and then I scold M. Oh, On the street you bang oh, all the man. time. <laughs> I wonder how many people who made this oh, game were man. white. <laughs> With the street slang in this game, there's no way those people are white. Uh, but it, I, I can't understand a thing, well, actually, and it's because we're white. I read about this game, and this game was the project. They got, got a bunch of ex-blood, ex-crips in LA together to come together and make this game. It was like a community outreach project. <laughs> they probably picked the rainbow from They did. It says freakdom. No. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Alright, I'm putting in some codes. Yo, Dude, I unlock crappy graphics mode. Look. <laughs> it's hard to believe Yo, Jaguar failed with games like this. I remember when they said they were making this game, like all the people on the White Man Can't Jump message boards. Oh, they were going crazy. And IRC message boards were so nuts. Usenet was ablaze. Yeah. All the fan fiction. The they streets. Were like, the streets were crazy. Story. Story. Wait. Yeah. I think. I think we won. I think, I think we Shaq wrote it himself. Mode. Hey, I was just hanging out at a Pepsi uh, corner. <laughs> Wait, downtown Tokyo? It looks like China. Is this no, I've been to Tokyo. That's exactly <laughs> what the Orient looks like. God damn, there's Pepsi everywhere in Tokyo. This is the height of Shaq's deal. I'm about to see some Reeboks in a second. <laughs> Greetings, big warrior. <laughs> I have not seen many black people. <laughs> right. I like that while we're reading, we're not talking. <laughs> I'm surprised my lips aren't moving. You must be 20 Pepsi tall. <laughs> See, when the Chinese guy talks, it's, or the Japanese, sorry, it's yellow. That's a good message. That's really, that's yeah, good. Yeah, but when Shaq's talking, wrong. it's white. What does that mean? <laughs> if it was black, you wouldn't be able to read it or understand it. So you're, you're making it's yourself sound like I'm making yeah. myself sound like Shaq. Okay. So I think we have some more. issues we might have to work through later. <laughs> yeah, Aren't you from Wisconsin? Yeah. yeah. There's an overworld map. It's, there is an overworld map. It's basically Zelda 2 with different <laughs> sprites. That's all Shaq Fu is. Wait, wait, wait. He just like went to this world and all of a sudden he's that he's guy's like got a jersey on too. Battle. Talking shit already. Is Shaq traveling through time? Oh, I got confused. I thought I was the other guy. <laughs> they look so alive. I was like, I'm fighting this big black guy. It's like living in Detroit. <laughs> Alright, say what you want about Shaq Fu. I'm sorry. It has good animation. It looks like flashback. Seems a little Don't floaty. Find software. They're fucking this wire fight, dude. What's wrong with Shaq's face? He's <laughs> <laughs> turning into like a Uncle Fester. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Iron Eagle 3 the game. He's beating his mouth open, like. So when Shaq gets hurt, he comes a mustache? I think it's a pretty good explanation for what happens mustache. when you get a mustache. <laughs> Can you get hurt? I'm gonna go to a you different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a different world map. All right. I'm gonna jump the ravine. You sure. cannot afford this. You're inventing right. your own more into entertaining game. Gargoyle. Than Shaq Fu. Bring on the gargoyle. <laughs> oh. oh. It's He's gonna slap you. Whatever. Sad. I'll throw my basketball back. You have the fury. I have fury. Look at, look at 
Shaq! Shaq's face when he has the fury, it just kind of, it does not look like he has the fury. It looks like he has something stuck in his mouth. Have you never had the fury? something dirty. Have you never had a case of the fury? No. Oh, you should stick with the moves, that hurts. Shaq looking away dejected. That's right. You should come back with, yeah, I won three championships. How many have you won, Gargoyle?